Hey guys, it's Amber, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a video that's a little bit different. I'm going to be reviewing my top five games to play whilst traveling or on holiday. I am so excited to be a Google Play guest editor. I've also written an article which is live now on the Google Play Store. Ah! so exciting! Anyway, if you want to check out the article, I'm going to put a link in the description below and that's just going to be talking more about the games that I am reviewing and my thoughts on gaming as a whole, so definitely check that out. So let's get into it. Now I'm going to talk to you my top five favourite games on the Google Play Store. We've got The Sims Mobile, Super Mario Run, Cooking Craze, Adventure Llama and Crossy Roads. Now out of all of the games that I played, these ones are definitely my favourite. They're just really reminiscent of my childhood. Some of them are completely new, some of them challenge your brain. The first game that I'm going to be talking about is The Sims Mobile. I'm sure that most of you will have played The Sims before on PC, but now you can actually get it on your mobile. Just like on the PC, this game is a simulation. Just to warn you, it does require a hefty data download at the beginning, so I'd probably recommend when you first download it doing that on Wi-Fi. But then once you're set up and ready to go, you can literally do it anywhere. I play it on the underground all the time. I am in love with this game, honestly. It just reminds me of my childhood. It looks just like the PC version, which I think is one of my favourite things. I was kind of worried that they'd try to update it and make it more modern, but the thing is The Sims was always so far ahead of its time. For me, I just thought it was perfect, and playing it on my mobile, honestly, it just takes me back to my childhood days. Now let's talk about the game's music and sounds. I normally play games with the sound off. I just tend to get really frustrated with the noises really quickly, but with The Sims, I didn't even consider it. I just left the noise on the whole way through. I literally played it for an hour the first time I downloaded loaded it and I had the music on and the sounds and all of the effects and I was loving it. I think maybe it's because it's so nostalgic for me. I just really like hearing the Sims muttering to themselves in their own little language. It just takes me back to when I was like 10 years old and I'd come in from school and then just play like six hours on the Sims back to back and then it would be midnight and then my parents would get annoyed at me for staying up. But you know what? I was committed to the game and that's what matters. My favourite time to play The Sims is actually when I'm on a long haul flight because you don't need data, it's great. Like I said, you can play it anywhere. So when I've got a flight that's eight, nine or even ten hours, Normally I just sleep or watch a film, but now I love it because I play this game and honestly it makes time go so quickly. I guess you could say that it's pretty addictive. I mean, when I was younger, I would literally just sit there and play for like eight hours without realizing how much time has passed. And to be fair, I did that recently on a five hour flight. I literally sat down on the plane, buckled my seatbelt, started playing, and then I looked up and we were landing. So not much has changed. Hmm. Moving on to the next game, now I'm going to be talking about Super Mario Run. Like all of the other Super Mario games, this one is an action game. Just like The Sims, it does require quite a big data download, so when you first download it, definitely recommend doing that on Wi-Fi at home, but once you're set up, again, free to go wherever you want and it doesn't eat up any of your data. This game looks amazing. It looks like an update on all of the versions that I've played previously on the Wii, on the Nintendo GameCube. Do you remember that? That was like back in the day. All of the versions that I've always played, I always thought the graphics were fantastic, but this they've really taken it to the next level. Now let's talk about music and sounds. For Super Mario Run, I normally tend to have the music off. Sometimes I travel without headphones if I'm in a rush. This is normally one of those situations, and then I really, really want to play this game, and I don't think the sound is super essential to the game. I don't really think it matters if you have the sound on or off. Like, this is such a fun game with or without sound. It really doesn't make a difference. Just like all Super Mario games, this one is pretty addictive, but in a good way, and I really enjoy playing it. I pretty much come back and play it every single day, and I'm still not fed up, so I guess that's a big thumbs up from me. Now onto the next game, Crossy Roads. This is an action game and something that I hadn't actually heard of previously. I was recommended it by a friend after they were addicted to it and I thought, fine, I'll give it a try. It is awesome, like amazing. When I play this game, I don't know why, but I feel like I'm giving my brain a workout. I have a feeling that it's aimed towards children and young adults and adults all the same, but for some reason, I feel like my brain really activates when I'm playing it. You really have to think about it. So basically, you're playing this little chicken and then you have to cross the road, as in, why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side. <laughs> anyway, you have to try and cross the road, but obviously it's a road. So there's cars and there's trucks and there's all of these vehicles trying to basically hit you. So you have to like hop along as the little chicken and then there'll be areas in between the roads. So there'll be like grass where you're safe, but then there'll be a river and planks of wood. So you have to like jump onto the plank of wood and then onto another plank of wood and then back onto the land. There isn't really levels. It's just one long game and you have to see how far you can get without getting hit or dying and it is like the most stressful thing ever but in an amazing way and I just keep challenging myself like I will make sure that I have a new high score every single day. I get super competitive so I guess it's pretty addictive 
addictive as well. This is one of those games that I do like to turn the sounds on. I just like the little hop hop noise and then the water. It's really relaxing when the river's going by and then the vehicles and the honk honk. I just think it's one of those games where it, it weirdly calms me down. Also, I think when it's a game where it's really competitive and you really get into it, the noises kind of help you get into the zone, if that makes sense. So I definitely play this one with the noises and sounds on. Now let's talk about Adventure Llama. Obviously, this is an adventure game. It's literally in the title. I love Llama, so this game made me very happy. It's quite a simple game, actually. I really like it because it's kind of the opposite to Crossy Road. With Crossy Road, you have to be like super on it and make sure that you know exactly what you're doing every second and you have to be aware of everything else going on. Whereas Adventure Llama, I feel like it's way more chilled and it's more relaxing and you don't have to be like super vigilant. You can just kind of lay back and you're playing the llama and it's really cute and fun and the llama's jumping around and there's levels. Oh, and there's daily rewards, which I love. So just for logging in every day, you get some points, which is nice. And then the points add up and then you can get the keys and the keys unlock boxes and the boxes unlock new challenges and levels and new llamas. I had a rainbow llama the other day. It was like the best thing I've ever seen. I didn't even know if you can get rainbow llamas. I mean, to be fair, in real life, you probably can't get a rainbow llama, but in the game, I unlocked a rainbow llama and it made me very, very excited. For Adventure Llama, I actually kept the sound and music turned off. I'm not too sure why, I just kind of felt that I didn't need it, and I played it with and without the sounds, and to be honest, I don't really think it adds to the gaming experience. It definitely doesn't take anything away. So for me, I tend to play this a lot when I'm actually walking somewhere, so it doesn't require too much concentration that you don't know what's going on around you. I keep the sound off so I can still hear everything around me, but I still have a lot of fun playing it when I'm walking down the street. It is a super fun game, and it is so easy to get used to. Compared to the other ones, it's less addictive. And now onto the final game, Cooking Craze. This game is a challenge game and oh my goodness, I am obsessed. I hadn't heard of the game previously and then one day I was looking through the Google Play Store and I thought, you know what? I kind of want to try a new challenge game. When I like a game, I tend to just play it over and over and over. So I thought I would introduce a new game into my repertoire. In real life, I'm the worst cook. I literally burn water. Don't think that's physically possible, but somehow I manage it. Cooking Craze is such a visually impressive game. There is so much going on at one time. You will never, ever get bored. So what about the sound and music on this app? I love having the sound on on this app. The noises are so funny. You get customers coming in and then as you build up the levels you have more and more customers and then you serve multiple customers at the same time whilst cooking like multiple food items. And there's so many noises that when you cook the food you have like the sizzling and it goes and then the customers are kind of blah, 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 when they ask the order. There's just so many noises going on and I don't know why but I find them really really entertaining. So for me this is one of those games where you have to have the sounds on. My favorite time to play this game is either when I'm on a long car journey somewhere or actually just before I go to bed at night. I am guilty of spending half an hour playing Cooking Craze every day before I go to sleep. Do I think this game is addictive? <laughs> Hell yeah I do. And I also feel like I've actually learned something about cooking since I've watched it, even though it's predominantly donuts and hot dogs, but I do like donuts and hot dogs and milkshakes, so you know, it's a good diet. None of these games actually require you to use data whilst you're playing them, so that is a massive save on battery and also mobile data costs. I have like 20 gigabytes a month and somehow I still go through that, so the fact that these don't require data is an absolute lifesaver. There you have it. Those are my top five games to play whilst on holiday or traveling, and they are all available on the Google Play Store, and they don't require data once you've downloaded them, which is an absolute godsend, especially when you're on holiday. Thank you for watching this video once again. If you want to check out my article on the Google Play Store, I've popped the link down below in the description, so please check that out. Let me know what you think. And again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.